Hello, this is Scott Metzger. I'm going to be showing uh, lighting using uh, Mari inside of V-Ray with uh, P-Tex painted uh, HDRs, um, which is pretty exciting. So the first thing I want to go over is how some people might be rendering right now. Um, and uh, currently we have a spherical map inside of this, um, in this apartment that was taken. Um, and one of the great things about you know spherical HDRs is they're they're somewhat easy to take and the results are fantastic. Um, but the problem is is you know it's always one sampled point uh, from this spherical image, so it's always the same distance. And you know that might be great um, like five years ago, but uh, times change and with neural renderers coming out, there's you know. Uh, faster ways to, you know, compute glossy reflections, refractions, and GI. Uh, for all those, you need to actually have distance. And what I mean by glossy, I mean like blurry reflections. Uh, so adding blurry re reflections to your render is definitely a step towards uh, photoreal uh, images. Um, so Daniel Buck was nice enough to uh, let me borrow his truck model um, that he's rendered in V-Ray before that has been fantastic to look at. So let's uh, just go ahead and start this off in V-Ray. Yeah, the scene is always empty. Come on. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw up a physical camera and when you're using the physical camera uh, it looks for correct distance and will actually try to um, blur out the background like it's using correct depth of field. So if we grab our camera and I'm going to go physical camera. We'll treat his physical camera. We're gonna go movie camera. Let's turn off uh, exposure and vignetting. And uh, let's see, uh, we got 36. Let's actually change it to, uh, let's go like 70, 70 mil. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, we'll do depth of field. And right now the focus is gonna be right in center camera. So let's uh, adjust the aperture size. So we'll do like a, a 1.4, which is pretty serious. And now if I was to actually use a distance tool to help with the focus, we're just gonna plop down two points and throw this on the perspective camera. And then we'll take this as our focus point. And I hope that's uh, right in front of there, there. And we'll grab our camera again, downstream connection, our distance tool. And uh, right under here, it's a specify focus. We'll just drag this guy uh, right there. So 498 uh, centimeters from camera. So it's it's not too bad, but the, the problem is is um, everything that's being um, added into this reflection is not uh, you know correct, uh, meaning that you know our focus is 781 centimeters from camera. Um, it needs to do the opposite in this reflection uh, for for focus, but um, you know this television here and the wall and uh, this outside building are, you know, on the spherical map are basically the same distance, so it's completely flat. And what we want to do is uh, find a way to actually um, use uh, geometry and HDR textures on those geometry to light um, and give accurate reflections and lighting. 
So what we'll do is we'll stop this and uh, let's take a peek inside a nuke. All right, so the first thing we are gonna do is look at this and using photo matrix, um, I com combined about three exposures and had them all uh, batch convert and then I brought them into nuke and we uh, adjust the exposure exposure and then white balanced uh, each photograph and the one thing I didn't do because I didn't think I need to but I was obviously wrong was undistort my images before I tried to model and line line up everything and the one thing you want to do no matter what is always undistort so using nuke x um, what I did is we can throw down a lens distortion node and uh, let's delete the old one if we go to the new um, all I have to do is go to grid and we're going to choose checkerboard and hit analyze and so it's going to take a moment now if we look at this here's before and then here's after so the same resolution as our photos so we're just going to copy this guy and uh, what we can basically do is just throw it you know all over our images and uh, if we look at this one it's completely undistorted and I could toggle back and forth so you can see around the edges like that's a good amount of uh, distortion that was undistorted here um, and if you did try to line up these uh, these edges we would definitely have a problem and we could we could still do without it um, even if we didn't undistort it we can fix it in Mari which is a really good thing um, and uh, for this whole room um, I have wanted to basically focus on this area for the lighting so I took more photos of this center island in the kitchen than, you know, this living room area facing um, facing towards us. Um, but there's still about uh, 150 uh, different photographs at, uh, at 4K uh, that are HDRs. So, you know, we don't have that much range with three, but there's definitely enough, uh, definitely enough to light with. Uh, so here's uh, here are all the photos, and uh, then I also took a reference photo. So this is um, with a 1.4 aperture. You get some nice bokeh um, and uh, good reference for what the depth of field should look like, um, along with you know a camera to uh, reference and line up. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at uh, the models. So if we go back into Maya, uh, let me just go open scene, and we're going to go under law of p-tags. All right. So what I did one by one is uh, I took a measurement took a few measurements but I pretty much started with uh, this table and uh, you can see the whole thing is made out of uh, quads you don't want to use triangles you don't want to use n-gons um, I actually when I first started this I had a few n-gons in the scene and uh, you know especially the cones if you create a primitive cone you get an n-gon so I had a uh, covered up with a uh, little patchwork um, so you see the green areas um, and, you know, the whole idea is we're basically going to paint this entire room uh, with p -tex. And you want all quads. And uh, on top of doing the modeling, we're also, I was also lining up the cameras. So we go right here to Cam 3. And uh, here's the lineup for that camera. If we go to Cam 39, uh, here's the lineup for this one. We'll just keep going down. So here's uh, this lineup, and you notice that's not you know completely 100% accurate, but uh, that's not an issue. Uh, for this photo, um, I was mostly worried about just grabbing this area uh, right in here uh, for this photo, and some of these uh, these edges in the front uh, because we're gonna project everything. Here's a nice one on the ground, and then. Uh, Another close-up of the, the counter. See, we got some outside photos, too. 
Yeah, so here's one looking outside this window. You can see we have these uh, rough shapes just to block off and give it some parallax uh, when we start painting on here. Yeah, here's another another, uh, another angle. And, uh, you know, basically, when you want to actually start lining up all these cameras... Uh, let's see... Ta-da! One, come on, oops, there we go. Um, one way to do it is uh, we're going to create a camera. And two things to, to, to place are the focal. So I had a 24 mil and the film back, uh, I believe for this camera, this uh, D90, it was a 0.930 inches by 0.622 inches so uh, all you have to do is put that camera aperture in and you should be good to go and because this is a, a 1.5 crop it's automatically going to adjust the focal so you, it's going to come to be about 36 or so but you don't need to put that in there only thing you have to worry about is the original focal and the correct uh, film back for that so after we lined up all these cameras, uh, one of the things you want to do is actually combine these into one camera. So I created a new camera, and uh, it's really important to create a new camera that you use to combine because um, when I would start to orientate these cameras, I'd move the pivots around and uh, scale everything. And unfortunately, there's like some weird bug when you go to bring in a scaled camera into Mari or Nuke or if you change the pivot around um, it doesn't like it too much. So what I did is I created this Mari camera and I went to every uh, frame position. So if we go here to Mari camera um, you can see we where it changes at frame 4 um, Right here, we get we change at frame 21, and what the deal is, this was picture uh, four, five, six. Uh, this one right here is 16, 17, 18. I don't see 19, 20. Must be out of out of sync. Uh, we have 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, uh, and so on. It goes by threes because of the three exposures. Uh, so it makes it a little easier when you want to find the actual image that goes uh, with it. So after we set keyframes to this, we are basically set up with uh, one camera that has every position uh, for this for this scene file. Um, and uh, for geometry that we have modeled, um, let's go back to perspective. Okay, so we're keeping the island here uh, completely separate, um, along with the the whole interior of the uh, the room is its own object. Um, and then this is a uh, it's like the patchwork because uh, I didn't have a way to transfer attributes from one p-text to another. This is kind of like the uh, the fix. And then outside here, we want to actually keep this uh, separate as well. So we have uh, about four different uh, groups of geometry. Uh, so when we go to export these, uh, let's go export selection. We want to go to uh, OBJ export. And we're going to set it to uh, materials off. We want smoothing and normals on, and we can then export our object and call it, uh, you know, blah blah blah. All right, and we're going to do that for all the uh, all the different geometry pieces. Now, for the camera, uh, we want the Mari camera. It's really important to take this camera and you know keep everything in world space. Um, you don't want to export a camera with multiple groups. Um, it's always want to make, make sure it's in world space. So uh, to do that, what we're going to do 
is now export this as FBX. So let's do export selection and choose FBX. All right. And uh, let's throw it on our, let's call it test for now. Let's see what we have. We have FBX 2009 because it was a really good year and I trust it. I don't trust any other year. Um, we're going to do camera. That's really all we have to worry about. And then bake animation and uh, yeah, let's do curve filter. Uh, why not? And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's export it. All right. So I think that wraps it up inside of Maya for now. We'll, we'll venture back here, but uh, you know we should be good um, and ready to start uh, start painting our images. So let's continue this in the next video.